Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In the session, we would look at the primary concern in the audit of owner's equity transaction and specifically we're going to look at the internal control of owner's equity transaction. This is part of the audit of a capital, equi capital acquisition and the repayment cycle. We already have four recordings, three of which deals with debt, debt as a source of capital acquisition. Uh, acquisition. Now we're going to start to deal with equity. We're going to start to deal with stocks. When we issue stocks to raise money, what type of internal control we should have. The first thing we want to differentiate is uh, the difference. There's an important difference in the audit of owner's equity between publicly held companies and closely held or private companies. Okay, what is the difference? Most private companies or small companies, they have few shareholders. So they have less shareholders and only on occasional stockholders equity transaction. So there's not a lot of transaction in the equity section, especially in the common stock. Publicly traded companies are a little bit different. They're more complex and we need to verify capital and common stock. We need to verify additional paid in capital and excess of power and we need to verify retained earning and related dividend. So they are, there, there are more transactions that are a little bit more involved. So we, we need to differentiate between the two. Here's the typical account that we will use in this uh, in this cycle. Basically, the first thing the company will do is issue stocks. So they will debit cash, they will credit common stock, and they will credit the paid in capital um, common stock. So this is the initial entry, debit cash, credit common stock, and credit paid in capital. Then the company at some point, they may pay dividend. So they will debit dividend. They will debit retained earning. When they pay dividend, they will debit retained earning, credit, uh, dividend payable. Okay. Then when they pay the dividend, they debit dividend payable and they credit cash. So they debit dividend payable and they credit cash. And usually these are these are the transactions that are involved. These are the transactions that are involved mainly. Now, do we have other transactions? Sure we do. We're, we might have treasury stock, okay? But those are the main transactions. So what are some internal control that are important to the owner's equity? Well, for one, the first thing is the proper authorization of transaction. Now, just like when we, when we issue notes payable, when we issue bonds, Okay, those transactions don't happen often, just like those, just like that. They don't happen often, but when they happen, they are material. Therefore, they are approved by the board of directors. So, especially common stock. Maybe a loan can be approved by top management, but issuing common stock is by the board of directors because you are changing the ownership of the company. So, anything that deals with the issuance of stocks, repurchase of capital stock, and declaration of dividend. Those three events, which are important, but they are not a lot of them, they get approved by the board of directors. What does that mean to us as auditors? It's easy to audit these accounts because just review the minutes for the board of directors to see what they decided to do. Another important control when it comes to owner's equity is the proper record keeping and segregation of duties. Okay, so internal control for a company must ensure that actual owners of the stock are recognized in the, in the corporate records. So we want to make sure that that's the case. Now, how do we make sure? We should have a capital stock certificate record. This record records the issuance and repurchase of capital stock for the life of the corporation. It will have a certificate number for each certificate, the number of shares issued, the name of the person to whom it was issued, and the issue date. So basically we have a record showing who owns the stock, their name, their addresses, their social security, when did they buy the stock, the date of the, the date of the purchase, if they sold it, the date of the sale, so on and so forth. And when the shares are repurchased, the capital stock certificate book should include the canceled certificate and the date of their cancellation. So basically, if the company buys back the stock, they would remove it from this record. So this is how they, they will make sure that actual owners are on the books. Also, we want to make sure that the correct amount of dividend is paid to the stockholders owning the stock as of the dividend record date. What is the records date? Well, when it comes to stocks, we need to be aware of three things, of three dates. Uh, date of declaration, date of record, which is this is the date that we are discussing now, and date of payment three dates, payments. So the date of the declaration is when the board of directors, when the board of directors, remember the board of directors decide on the, the, the board of directors decide on the records date. So the, on, on, on the, 
on the date of declaration, the company will debit retained earnings and they will credit dividend payable. Basically what happened is now they decided to pay 100,000 in dividend. What does that mean? It means now they made a commitment to pay 100,000 in dividend. Let's assume today is 1215. Then on that date, the company would also decide something called the records date. Let's assume the records date is 1226. The records date is 1226. What does that mean? It means this is the date of record. What does that mean? It means you have to own the stock on this date. If you own the stock on this date, you will get your money. And the date of payment is 1-3. 1-3 is the date of payment. This is when they debit dividend payable. 100,000 and they credit cash. 100,000. This is dividend payable. Okay, those are the three dates. So we're dealing with the date of record. Now, how do we make sure that the that our owners are on the date of record? Well, the shareholder capital stock master file. So we need to keep track of this. Is the record of outstanding shares at any given time? This is the name of the file. This is the master file. This is the related document that we related document that we need to look at. Now, for publicly traded companies, it's a little bit easier. Why? Because independent register and stock transfer handles their stocks so a company with a stock listed on a securities exchange it means publicly traded it means publicly traded versus private if it's public is required to engage an independent registrar as a control to prevent the improper issuing of stock certificate well if you're a publicly traded kind of it's easier to audit because somebody else some company devoted for this process is taking care of this Okay. So most large corporations also employ the service of a stock transfer agent to maintain the stockholders record, including these, uh, those documenting the transfer of stock ownership. So once again, large corporation, they use stock transfer agent. And when one person buys and sells their stock to another person, the stock transfer agent rather than the company keeps track of this. Okay. So most companies also use a transfer agent to dis disperse cash dividend, further improving internal control. So if they also use the um, transfer agent to handle their cash dividend, so it's easy for us as auditors because the company is independent from the company that we're auditing and most probably they have good internal control because that's what they do for a living. So it makes it easier for us. So, so those are some proper internal control for the owner's equity account. In the next session, we would look at substantive testing and test of details for capital stock, which is common stock and additional paid in capital. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me or see me in class. Make sure to read your book, complete your homework, complete your quiz. And if you're studying for your CPA exam, study hard.